Hello, my name is Matt Gracie and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is about setting up alarms in Grafana so that your team will be notified if there are operational issues in your Security Onion grid. As you may know, Security Onion is constantly collecting performance metrics from the nodes in your deployment. Things like CPU load, network traffic levels, disk space, and the like, and storing them in an InfluxDB database on the manager node. Some default dashboards to visualize this data are available through the Grafana tool in the Security Onion console's web interface. What you may not know is that these metrics can be used as the basis for setting up alarms to let you know when there are issues that need addressing, like a file system running out of space or a span port failing. The example that we'll be using for this video is sending an alert to a Discord server when the traffic on a standalone Security Onion server's monitoring interface drops below a certain threshold, indicating a potential problem with the TAP infrastructure or with the network being monitored. This is just an example. As we'll see, Grafana can send alarms through a wide variety of channels, and they can be generated based on any influx DB metric that you choose. The idea here is just to walk through the process so that when you want to set up an alarm like this, you understand how to do it. If your use case is a little different, you should be able to figure it out with the documentation available from Security Onion and Grafana. If you're still struggling, feel free to start a new thread in our discussion forum. Let's get started. To get started with Grafana, log into your Security Onion console, or SOC, and click on the Grafana link on the left hand side of the screen. It's in this lower section here underneath Tools. When you open Grafana, the first thing that you'll see is the Security Onion Grid Overview dashboard. This is a dashboard that we include by default that gives you vital information about all the nodes in your Security Onion grid. Things like system uptime, CPU usage, disk space, that sort of thing. This is a demo system that's running in a standalone configuration, so we're only seeing information for one node. But in a distributed environment, you'd see all this information charted out on the same graphs for multiple nodes. You could compare them against one another. So for example, if one of your forward nodes was experiencing much higher CPU usage than the others, it would show up in this graph here. By default, there's a lot of really useful information here. CPU usage, disk usage, both for your root partition and for your M NSM partition where the security and the data is stored, uh, IO statistics, network traffic information, both for your management interfaces and for your monitor interfaces, and so on. Any of these would make excellent subjects for setting up an alarm. What we're going to look at in particular is the uh, monitor interface traffic. Right here you see we've got a mean level of 613 kilobits per second with a max of 3.5 megabits. We probably want to put a trigger in place and say if it drops far below that mean level, we can raise an alarm. So that's what we're going to do. Another interesting dashboard, which we include by default, is the pipeline dashboard. If you click on the dashboards icon here, the one that looks like four little squares, and then manage dashboards, you'll see there's a pipeline overview dashboard. This is especially useful in a distributed deployment, but you can see all of the data traversing your security on your grid moving from the forward nodes to the manager, from the manager node into Redis, from Redis into the search nodes. Also, all of your Elastic ingestion performance is here as well, so you can see what sections of the Elastic pipeline are taking the most CPU time in your deployment. If you have custom parsers or custom ingestion pipelines set up, this can be really useful information. And if you run into a situation where you're trying to troubleshoot your Elastic backend, say events are being captured on the forward nodes, but they're not showing up properly in Elastic on the backend, this can provide really, really good troubleshooting information. But So back to the grid overview. By default in Grafana, we're only going to see this stuff in a read-only view. We need to authenticate as an administrative user in order to make changes or set up alarms. In order to log into Grafana as an administrator, we need to retrieve the password from the secrets pillar in our salt installation. Log into your manager node in a distributed environment or your standalone node and run the command sudo salt call pillar.get secrets. What this will do is it'll retrieve the randomly generated passwords for a bunch of security onion components that were set up at install time. Things like Fleet, MySQL, Playbook, and Grafana, which is the one that we're interested in. Get that Grafana password and copy it to your clipboard. 
Now that you have the Grafana password, return to the overview screen, click on the door icon in the lower left and click sign in. The username that we want to use is admin and the password is the one that we just retrieved from the secrets pillar. When we log in, it'll return us to the same screen, but we'll see some more options. If we scroll down to the monitor interface uh, graph here, we'll see that we now have access to edit the graph, whereas before we could only view it. If we click on edit, we'll see how this graph is built. So this is probably a good place to take a screenshot or write down this query information because this is the query that we're going to need to use to build our alarm for when the monitor interface traffic drops below a particular threshold. So we'll take a screenshot here and then we'll go back to our overview. Now there are two components to setting up an alert. One is we have to have a notification channel that is where the alert is going to go and the other is making the alert itself. So let's start with the notification channels. So after clicking on notification channels, we click on add channel. We need to enter a name for our channel. We'll call it monitoring team. And then we need to select the type. That is, what do we want to use to send these alerts? There's a bunch of canned configurations for things like Discord, uh, email, Google Hangouts, Teams, Slack. So if you're using any of those in your environment, uh, and you want to use those to receive these Grafana alerts, that might be a, a good selection. There's also a generic webhook down at the bottom here, so if you have something that's not listed, or uh, that you built in-house, for example, some sort of automation platform, that sort of thing, uh, but it can accept a webhook post request, that's another option. In this case, we are going to be using Discord, so we'll click on Discord, uh, we'll put in a webhook URL, right here. Then there are some optional settings on top of Discord. We can provide a URL for an avatar, so if we, if we have a, an icon that we want to use in the chat, uh, or we can add a message content, so if there's a particular group that we want to tag in these alerts in Discord, we can do that as well. Uh, in this case, we're going to leave those blank. Those aren't really necessary for this demonstration. And then finally, we can click test and make sure that an alert shows up in our Discord server. Uh, I just got the, the Discord chime, so I think everything is working properly. Now I'm going to save it, and you can see I have my monitoring team notification channel all set up. So now I just need to create the alert. So I'll go over here to my dashboards, manage, and then create a new dashboard. Now the reason why we're creating a new dashboard is because we don't want to add an alert to one of the existing dashboards in case it gets modified in the future then your alert might get wiped out the next time you do a soup. It's much safer to just create a new dashboard with a new panel on it and then attach the alert to that so that the update process won't break it. So we have our new dashboard. We'll say add an empty panel. And this is where that screenshot from earlier comes in handy. We need to reproduce the query that made that monitoring interface uh, chart. So we'll click on data source, we'll change that to influx DB because we're pulling information out of the influx database. From default, we want to select net here, where host equals SO standalone, that's my uh, standalone instance host name, and the interface is bond zero. Bond Zero, of course, is our monitoring interface and security onion. Uh, we're going to select from the field bytes received. Uh, we will use the mean value. We will use a non negative derivative set to one second. And we will use the math transformation. So multiply that by 8 because we're looking for that. And there we go. We have now reproduced that monitoring interface chart that was in the default dashboard. As you can see, the panel is already starting to fill in with the lines from the graph. We'll update the title here. We can call it monitoring traffic because uh, if we create more of these, we'll want to make sure that we know which chart is which. 
And then uh, the next step is to create our alert. So we'll go into alert, create an alert. We can call it the monitoring traffic alert. That's fine. It's pulling that from the graph name. Evaluate every one minute for five minutes. That's the default and that should be fine. And what we're saying is if the average value of query A, that is the monitoring query that we just put in, is below, let's say, 10 kilobits per second, then we're going to want to raise an alert because that means that our monitoring interface has stopped receiving traffic. Either there's something wrong with the, uh, the span or tap port that it's plugged into, or the interface itself is down, or there's some other issue going on that needs to be addressed. We'll scroll down here and we'll say, send this to our monitoring team. That's the notification group that we set up earlier. Message, monitoring interface, traffic low. That's all we need to do. We can hit save up here. It'll ask us to save our dashboard. We can call this our alerting dashboard. Save it. And now we have this chart and this little heartbeat here indicates that we have an alarm set on here. Now I'm gonna pause the recording for a minute. I'll shut off the uh, traffic to that monitoring interface and we'll see what the alert looks like. So the monitoring interface has been down for a couple minutes and I just got a chime from my Discord client. When I checked the private alert channel, which is the one that I set up that webhook with, I see that I have two notifications. One is the test notification from when I initially set up the notification group and the other is a monitoring traffic alert, which is the alert that I just set up a few minutes ago. So as you can see, as soon as the monitoring traffic drops below a particular threshold, it's going to reach out and write to this channel. If my monitoring team or my operations team is watching uh, Discord or Slack or some other channel, uh, their experience will be very much like this. They'll get an alert and they'll know that they need to go in and check to see why the traffic is so low on the monitoring interface. If you want to send these alerts via email, that's possible and supported, but it does require some additional configuration. So check the Security Engine website for details on how to set up things like the SMTP server. So to summarize, Security Onion is constantly gathering performance information from the nodes in your grid and storing them in an InfluxDB database on the manager. You can use Grafana to view the information that's in there. There's visualizations built in by default for things like memory usage, and disk usage, and pipeline status. Or you can use Grafana to raise alarms when some of that stuff falls below particular metrics in your environment. I hope this was useful. If you need more detail on how to configure these components, the Security Onion documentation page has everything you need. That's at securityonion.net slash docs. If you're interested in our training offerings where we get deeper into these topics, check that out at securityonion.net slash training. And finally, if you're trying to implement this in your environment and you're running into roadblocks or having trouble, feel free to start a new thread at securityonion.net slash discuss. I hope this was helpful. Have a great day.